10 Things That We Thought Existed, But Didn't, Science Telly. Hello and welcome to Science Telly, the channel where we explore the fascinating world of science and history. In this video, we're going to talk about 10 non-existent things that we've discovered in the past, and how we realized they were not real. These are things that were once believed to exist, either based on myths, legends, misinterpretations, or mistakes, but were later proven to be false or imaginary. Some of them may surprise you, so stay tuned until the end of the video to find out more. The first non-existent thing we're going to talk about is mermaids. Mermaids are mythical creatures that have the upper body of a human and the lower body of a fish. They have been depicted in various cultures and stories for thousands of years, from ancient Greece and Rome to medieval Europe and Asia. Some people even claim to have seen them in real life, such as the explorer Christopher Columbus, who reported seeing three mermaids near the Dominican Republic in 1493. However, he also noted that they were not as beautiful as he had expected, and that they looked more like men than women. The most likely explanation for these sightings is that Columbus and other sailors mistook manatees, dugongs, or seals for mermaids. These marine mammals have some features that resemble humans, such as a flat face, a tail that can be bent upwards, and limbs that can be used to hold objects. They also sometimes come to the surface to breathe, making them visible to observers. However, they are clearly not half-human, half-fish, and have no relation to the mythical mermaids. The second non-existent thing we're going to talk about is Florentium. Florentium was a proposed element that was supposedly discovered in 1898 by a team of Italian chemists led by Raffaello Nassini. They claimed to have found a new gas in the volcanic emissions of Mount Vesuvius, which had a greenish-yellow color and a characteristic spectrum. They named it after the city of Florence, where they worked. However, Florentium turned out to be a hoax, as no other scientists could reproduce their results or detect the gas in other volcanic areas. Nassini and his colleagues had actually used a mixture of chlorine and nitrogen dioxide, which produced the same color and spectrum as their supposed new element. They had fabricated their discovery to gain fame and prestige, but they were eventually exposed and discredited. Florentium was never added to the periodic table, and no such element exists in nature. The third non-existent thing we're going to talk about is Brontosaurus. Brontosaurus was a name given to a large herbivorous dinosaur that lived during the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous periods, about 150 to 100 million years ago. It had a long neck, a massive body, and a long tail. It was one of the most famous and popular dinosaurs, appearing in many books, movies, and cartoons. However, Brontosaurus was not a valid scientific name, but a mistake that resulted from a fossil mix-up. In 1877, the paleontologist Othniel Charles Marsh discovered and named a new dinosaur, Apatosaurus, based on a partial skeleton. Two years later, he found another skeleton, which he thought was a different species, and named it Brontosaurus. However, he did not realize that the two skeletons belonged to the same genus, and that the second one was just a larger and more complete specimen of Apatosaurus. To make matters worse, he also used the wrong skull for Brontosaurus, attaching a skull from another dinosaur, Camarasaurus, to the body. This error was not corrected until the 1970s, when more fossils and studies showed that Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus were the same dinosaur, and that the correct skull was more slender and elongated. According to the rules of scientific nomenclature, the first name given to a species has priority over later names, so Apatosaurus is the valid name, and Brontosaurus is a synonym. However, the name Brontosaurus is still widely used and recognized by the public, and some paleontologists have argued that it should be revived as a separate genus. The fourth non-existent thing we're going to talk about is Coronium. Coronium was a name given to a hypothetical element that was thought to exist in the solar corona, the outer layer of the sun's atmosphere. It was proposed in 1868 by the astronomer William Huggins, who observed a green emission line in the spectrum of the corona during a solar eclipse. This line did not match any known element, so he suggested that it was due to a new element, which he called coronium. However, coronium was not a new element, but a highly ionized form of iron. In the extremely hot and low-density conditions of the corona, iron atoms lose 13 of their 26 electrons, creating a positively charged ion, Fe13+. This ion emits a green light at a wavelength of 530.3 nanometers, which is the same as the line observed by Huggins. This was discovered in the 1930s by the physicists Walter Grotrian and Bengt Edlian, 
who explained that the high ionization state of iron and other metals in the corona produced many of the mysterious lines that had been attributed to new elements. Coronium was thus shown to be a misinterpretation of the solar spectrum, and not a real element. The fifth non-existent thing we're going to talk about is the controversy between Triceratops and Taurosaurus. Triceratops and Taurosaurus were two types of horned dinosaurs that lived during the late Cretaceous period, about 68 to 66 million years ago. They both had three horns on their heads, two above their eyes and one on their nose, and a large frill at the back of their skulls. However, they differed in the size and shape of their frills. Triceratops had a shorter and solid frill, while Taurosaurus had a longer and thinner frill, with two large holes in it. In 2010, a study by the paleontologists John Scanella and Jack Horner suggested that Triceratops and Taurosaurus were not separate species, but different growth stages of the same dinosaur. They argued that as Triceratops aged, its frill grew longer and thinner, and developed holes, transforming into Taurosaurus. They based their claim on the analysis of the bone structure and the number of fossils of each type. They found that Triceratops had immature bone tissue, while Taurosaurus had mature bone tissue, and that Taurosaurus fossils were much rarer than Triceratops fossils. They concluded that Taurosaurus was the adult form of Triceratops, and that the name Triceratops should be kept, since it was the first one to be named. However, this claim was challenged by other paleontologists, who presented evidence that Triceratops and Taurosaurus were distinct species. They pointed out that there were differences in the shape and position of the horns, the size and shape of the skull, and the number and arrangement of the teeth between the two types. They also showed that there were fossils of young Taurosaurus and old Triceratops, contradicting the idea that they represented different ages of the same dinosaur. They argued that the variation in the bone tissue and the number of fossils could be explained by other factors, such as environmental stress, individual variation, and sampling bias. They concluded that Triceratops and Taurosaurus were separate and valid genera, and that the name Taurosaurus should be retained. The debate between Triceratops and Taurosaurus is still ongoing, and more research and fossils are needed to resolve it. However, most paleontologists agree that Triceratops and Taurosaurus were closely related, and that they belonged to the same subfamily, the Chasmosaurini. We have reached the halfway point of this video, and we still have five more non-existent things to talk about. But before we continue, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notifications, so you don't miss any of our future videos. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. We love to hear from you and we'll try to answer as soon as possible. Thank you for your support, and now let's get back to the video. The sixth non-existent thing we're going to talk about is Neith. Neith was a name given to a supposed moon of Venus, which was reported by several astronomers from the 17th to the 19th centuries. The first observation of Neith was made in 1645 by the Italian astronomer Francesco Fontana, who claimed to have seen a small star near Venus. He thought it was a moon, and named it after the Egyptian goddess Neith, who was associated with Venus. However, Neith was not a moon, but an optical illusion or a misidentification of other celestial objects. Venus does not have any natural satellites, as confirmed by modern observations and spacecraft missions. The apparent sightings of Neith were probably caused by the glare of Venus, the phases of Venus, the stars or planets near Venus, or the errors or defects in the telescopes or the eyes of the observers. Neith was thus a phantom moon, and not a real one. The seventh non-existent thing we're going to talk about is Nebulium. Nebulium was a name given to a hypothetical element Nebulium was a name given to a hypothetical element that was thought to exist in the interstellar nebulae, the clouds of gas and dust in space. It was proposed in 1864 by the astronomer William Huggins, who observed a green emission line in the spectrum of the Orion Nebula, which did not match any known element. He suggested that it was due to a new element, which he called nebulium. However, nebulium was not a new element, but a forbidden transition of oxygen. A forbidden transition is a type of atomic emission that occurs when an electron jumps from a higher to a lower energy level, releasing a photon of light. However, the transition is very unlikely and rare, because it violates some selection rules that govern the quantum behavior of atoms. Therefore, it can only happen in very low-density environments, such as the interstellar nebulae, where the atoms are not disturbed by collisions with other atoms. The green line observed by Huggins was actually due to the forbidden transition of doubly ionized oxygen, O2+, 
which emits a light at a wavelength of 500.7 nanometers. This was discovered in the 1920s by the physicists Ira Bowen and Bengt Edlian, who explained that many of the unknown lines in the nebular spectra were due to forbidden transitions of oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and other elements. Nebulium was thus another misinterpretation of the cosmic spectrum, and not a real element. The eighth non-existent thing we're going to talk about is Bus Island. Bus Island was a name given to a supposed island in the North Atlantic Ocean, which was reported by the English explorer Martin Frobisher in 1578. He claimed to have seen a large and high island, about 200 miles long and 40 miles wide, near the coast of Greenland. He named it after Sir William Buss, one of the sponsors of his expedition. He also claimed to have seen a mountain of gold on the island, which sparked a gold rush in England. However, Buss Island was not a real island, but a mirage or a misidentification of another landmass. No other voyagers could find the island, and no maps or charts could locate it. The gold that Frobisher brought back from the island was actually iron pyrite, a common mineral that looks like gold, but is worthless. Bus Island was thus a phantom island, and not a real one. The ninth non-existent thing we're going to talk about is Chiron. Chiron was a name given to a supposed planet between Saturn and Uranus, which was predicted by the French mathematician Urbain Le Verrier in 1860. He based his prediction on the observed irregularities in the orbits of Saturn and Uranus, which he attributed to the gravitational influence of an unknown planet. He named it after the centaur Chiron, a figure from Greek mythology. However, Chiron was not a real planet, but a miscalculation or a coincidence. The irregularities in the orbits of Saturn and Uranus were actually due to the errors in the measurements and the models of the solar system, which did not account for the effects of other planets, such as Neptune and Pluto. The prediction of Chiron was also based on the assumption that the solar system was stable and deterministic, which is not true, as the planets are subject to chaotic and unpredictable perturbations. Chiron was thus a hypothetical planet, and not a real one. The tenth and final non-existent thing we're going to talk about is Themis. Themis was a name given to a supposed asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, which was proposed by the German astronomer Johann Daniel Titius in 1766. He noticed a pattern in the distances of the planets from the Sun, which could be expressed by a simple mathematical formula known as the Titius-Bode law. However, there was a gap in the formula where a planet should be, but was not. He suggested that there was a belt of small asteroids in that gap, which he called Themis, after the Greek goddess of justice. However, Themis was not a real asteroid belt, but a coincidence or a speculation. The Titius Bode law was not a physical law, but an empirical observation, which had no theoretical basis or explanation. It also failed to predict the existence of Neptune and Pluto, which did not fit the pattern. The gap in the formula was actually occupied by the asteroid belt, which contains thousands of small rocky bodies, but not a single large planet. The asteroid belt was discovered in the early 19th century, by the Italian astronomer Giuseppe Piazzi and others, who found the first four asteroids, Ceres, Pallas, Juno, and Vesta. Themis was thus a conjectural asteroid belt, and not a real one. We have reached the end of this video, and we hope you enjoyed learning about 10 non-existent things that we've discovered in the past. These are just some examples of how science and history can be full of surprises, errors, and mysteries, and how we can always learn something new from them. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Science Telly, for more amazing videos like this one. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.